Hello and welcome to my channel where I'm obsessing about how to make gluten-free delicious baked goods and today I'm making a gluten-free strawberry rhubarb pie with frozen strawberries that not only outshines their glutinous cousins but will fool anyone to think it's the real deal. <music> with how I make strawberry rhubarb pie with fresh strawberries but frozen strawberries need a whole entire different treatment and yes you have to treat fruits differently in a gluten-free pie than in a regular glutinous pie now in gluten-free pie if you don't cook in your fruits beforehand and thicken up the juices you get very sort of a soggy pie result and not to make it a little bit more difficult or technical, if you have frozen strawberries, it has certainly a lot more liquid and a destroyed membrane, so you've got to treat it differently than fresh strawberries. And if you'd like to learn more about gluten-free baked deliciousness, make sure to subscribe to my channel. And I have a book out. It is on Kindle Unlimited, and it's called Gluten-Free Sugar Gasm. What you want to do with frozen strawberries is you want to defrost them. And when you defrosted them, you want to strain them to get out any extra liquid. And you can see how much liquid came out of them. We all have seen defrosted strawberries and they're kind of mushy and soft. And because they're so soft, we actually don't want to cook the frozen strawberry with the filling. But we will later just add them to the cooked in rhubarb. I still have to prep the strawberries though. But you see they are kind of uneven, so I do want to kind of cut some of them into smaller pieces, just that they are a little bit more even. Because you really want to combine in a bite the flavor of strawberries and rhubarb. And if the strawberries are too big, you will have more of a bite of just strawberries or just a bite of rhubarb. I'm finished with cutting my strawberries in equal sizes and I'm getting ready now to prep my rhubarb. So what I want to do with this rhubarb is I want to split it and cut it in about one inch to two centimeter slices. You don't want it really to be more than two centimeters in either dimension. I have no clue how much rhubarb I got. So I'm going to quick measure and I want to have around 750 grams, which is about one and a half pounds. And I'm going to add now the juice of my frozen strawberries. And I'm going to add into my rhubarb now the 150 grams of white sugar and the 50 grams of brown sugar and combine it with my spatula. So I'm going to start cooking in now the rhubarb, the sugar and the frozen strawberry juice. My filling is starting to cook and I need to thicken it up now. And I like to normally use cornstarch for that, but I do know some people of celiacs have also allergies to cornstarch. So you can substitute it with potato starch. I don't like to substitute it with tapioca starch because that creates sort of a very weird gummy uh, texture. So preferably cornstarch. If you can't do cornstarch, use potato starch. And you can use equal amounts of cornstarch and potato starch. And you start to see now how the rhubarb is starting to break down. I'm going to thicken the pie filling with some cornstarch. So I'm going to add some cornstarch in a bowl and going to add some of the juices from the pot. I'm going to whisk the cornstarch and the juices until they're well combined. And I'm going to pour the cornstarch now back into the pot. I can start to feel now how the cornstarch is thickening up my filling. I'm going to turn off the stove now and take the pot off the stove. And I'm going to add now the strawberries into the pot. And again, I have a bowl issue. I have to pour my strawberries and rhubarbs in the bigger bowl. So now what you want to do is you want to fold under the strawberries and the rhubarb. And I overcooked a little bit of rhubarb. You saw how it fell apart. I'm not too happy about that. I'm going to add now the zest of one lemon, one teaspoon of cinnamon, and I'm going to add two tablespoons of cornstarch. And after I mix the strawberry, the lemons and the cornstarch, I'm going to let it cool down. I'm going to check now after 30 minutes or an hour, depending how long it took to cool down. And I'm realizing that my filling is now pretty thick and stiff, which is good. That's exactly what I want for my filling. I'm going to get ready now to assemble my pie. I made my pie dough yesterday night, I chilled it 
and today I'm gonna to roll it out and prep it for my strawberry rhubarb pie. To make my pie crust, I'm gonna split the pie dough. I'm gonna roll it out and I'm gonna put the pie pan upside down and then just flip the pie crust into it. So I'm gonna put my hand underneath it. My one hand touches my other hand through the parchment paper. I flip it and pull off now the parchment paper. And again, if I quick have to fill in some of the gaps, I try to do it really fast so I don't touch the dough too much. And I'm gonna cut certainly with a sharp knife the edges. And I like the edge to be a little bit thicker. Okay, so here's your pie crust. Here is my strawberry filling. And I put a filling into the pie crust. It's gonna be a nice strawberry rhubarb pie. And I have to finish my pie now with closing it up. And I was thinking, I don't wanna create a lattice pattern for this pie. So I'm gonna roll out my dough and cut different size of stripes with my ruler. And I'm gonna lay the different stripes on the top of my pie. And with the second set of stripes, I'm gonna create a weave. Here's the finished pie. I'm gonna cover the pie now with a pie shield. The only thing left to do is put the pie into the oven at 325 degrees Fahrenheit, which is around 170 degrees Celsius, and bake it for about an hour. And here's my finished baked pie. I hope you enjoyed today's show, and if you did, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and check the bell to get notifications about any upcoming videos. And if you have any comments, feedback, ideas which I can try out, please make sure to add them below in the comment box. And I see you next week. Bye.